Hey guys, so today we're going to be showing you how to test a battery using a multimeter. Now there are several ways to test a battery, like using a load tester for example, or there's more sophisticated products on the market, but we're going to be using a multimeter because it's safe, and most of you probably already have this in your toolbox. Today we're going to be using pretty standard multimeters. Now if you're doing this by yourself, to do this test properly, you want a multimeter that has a min-max setting or the ability to record, because there will be one test where you will be in the vehicle. Now if you're like me and you have at least one friend, you can watch the multimeter while someone's cranking it over. To do this test, you're going to be putting your multimeter on the DC20V setting. Okay, this is our first vehicle. Old battery. This looks like the battery that originally came with the vehicle. So we're going to do our first test. We're going to see what the battery lies at. I've had the stereo running. Turn on the lights. Make sure there's no surface charge. So let's see where we're at. So 12.47. That's looking pretty good. Uh, if you're just testing a battery, 12.6 is probably the max you're going to see. So next we're going to do a test where we're going to crank the vehicle, and it shouldn't drop below 9.6. That's kind of the magic number. If you stay above 10, we're looking really good. So we're going to crank the motor over right now. And now with the alternator running, we're at 14.24. Very acceptable. Uh, usually I like to see around 14.5. That's a really good rating. So this battery and charging system actually is for what it looks like. It's actually running really well. Now we're on my personal vehicle, the Interceptor. Now we're going to test with the battery just laying here. Had the stereo running with the lights on just to get rid of that surface charge. And we're at 12.26, uh, acceptable. Now during the crank cycle, again, we want to hopefully stay above 10 volts. Let's see what it does when you crank it over. Yeah, it stayed above 10, and we jumped all the way to 14.56. Very happy with the way it is. This battery is about one year old and it does have the big three upgrade on it, so that probably helps it a bit. So, very good on this test. Okay, here we got the Nissan Frontier you guys have seen us work on before. This particular battery is quite old actually. This used to be in Logan's Lancer before, now it's in the Frontier. We're guessing it's anywhere between seven to eight years old, so it's a little bit tired, but it still works. But let's see what it uh, what it tests at. So testing it just sitting here, twelve point one eight, looking pretty good. Okay, now we're gonna crank it over. It did actually drop down to nine point two, but it still started the vehicle. Even with the with the motor running, we're down to 14.19, so lower than what we'd want to see, but it still works. The car does have an upgraded grounding kit on it that we made in the shop, but you can definitely tell the battery's a little bit tired now. So here's our final test. This is the old Optima yellow top I used to have in the Interceptor, and I made the mistake of buying the wrong battery size kind of crapped out on me, so I gave it to Logan. He's just using it as a bad, uh, backup battery in the bed of his Frontier. Now, the first test you saw on this Frontier, we do have a solenoid on it, so it was not connected to this battery. So this battery was not affecting the test at all. But now we're going to have to hook it up through the solenoid, so now this battery's going to be on the charging system. So we're just going to see how it does on our test. So just sitting here... Twelve point zero eight. Uh, pretty low, but it's still functional. Okay, now we're going to crank the truck over. 9.7. And with the vehicle running, climbs up to 14.06. Yeah, this battery, it is a deep cycle, but it is a tired battery as well. Um, I'd say this thing's about four years old and sat on the shelf for a while, and then we woke it back up and put it in this truck. But as a backup battery for running other devices and things, it's doing the trick right now. So let's recap as a guideline. Now, 
with the battery just sitting there, you want to be 12 at the minimum, hopefully, or closer to 12.6. Now, during the crank cycle, this is the time when the battery gets hit hard the most because it requires a lot of energy to start over, to drive that starter motor and turn over that motor. Lowest you want to see is 9.6. Now, we saw in one vehicle, it actually did drop below that and it still cranked it over just fine. But if we can stay above 10 during the crank cycle, you're looking really good. With the motor running, you want to be at least 14 to 14.5. That shows you that the alternator is working properly based off a multimeter setting. If you're hovering low at let, let's say 12.6 or right around where you're testing the battery when it's just sitting there, you might have an issue with your alternator and you might need to get that checked out. So hopefully guys you learned something about another function in your multimeter and how to use it. In other videos I will be going over more specific tools when it comes to diagnostics and testing electrical but today I thought this would be a good video for you guys to learn off of to use a basic hand tool that you should have in your toolbox.